When dealing with wind and current, your landing and maneuvering decisions will be based on relative speeds and directions of both. Let's first deal with current, which for many calm water pilots will be a new experience. Taxing a float plane in current is similar to flying your aircraft at a low altitude in a strong wind. In either situation, the airplane is quite comfortable in its relative environment. It only becomes a problem in relation to the ground, or more specifically for the float plane, in relation to the shoreline or other objects. If wind is not a factor, with your engine at idle power, your float plane will drift along at about the same speed as the current. Taxing into current is much like flying against a headwind, in that your relative speed to the shoreline will be reduced by the speed of the current. This situation provides the ultimate control and offers you the ability with the right power setting to hold your position or even back up. When traveling diagonally with the current, you have to adjust your heading to compensate for the drift, but can continue to use the current to your handling advantage. Where current can become a problem is taxiing down or with the current. When simply floating down current without power, your aircraft will be moving about the same speed. That means there will be no water flow over your water rudders, making them ineffective. So to turn out, you must taxi faster than the current to create a flow over your water rudders. The increased airflow from the propeller will both propel your aircraft forward and also increase the effectiveness of your aircraft's rudder to help in the turn. Another effective current will be your turning radius. Starting into current and turning down current, your track relative to the shore will stretch out requiring a wider turning area. Conversely, when turning into the current, your track will be compressed. With an understanding of how current works, the first consideration coming into a destination where there is current will be landing. Landing into the current in a no-wind situation offers no reduction in the touchdown airspeed. However, the relative touchdown airspeed on your floats will be the sum of both your overwater speed plus the speed of the current. So if your touchdown speed is 51 miles per hour and the current speed is 4 miles per hour, the touchdown impact speed on your floats will be 55. Landing into current will help increase the drag on your floats once on the water, providing a shorter stopping distance. When the wind and current are both moving in the same direction, landing into the wind, into current, offers the advantage of touching down at the slowest possible speed over water and the current will help slow your aircraft. Plus, once on the water, the rudders will still be effective. With the wind blowing against the current, you have the option of either landing into the current with a tailwind or into the wind with the current. As a general rule, landing into wind is the best choice unless the river is moving extremely quickly. In that case, unless the tailwind is very light, you better look for a more suitable location to land. Once on the water taxiing, you have to balance the current with the wind. If you've landed into the wind and against the current and need to turn around to taxi in, the aircraft's tendency will be to weathercock. And after the turn, moving down current, you can expect the water rudders to be particularly ineffective at idle speed. So step taxi to maintain control and plan to come off the step down current of your turn in point. Letting your aircraft weathercock into the wind so you can make your approach at the lowest possible speed.